Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So for all those who are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes as well as the updates for all our latest videos. So let's get started now. This is the first question which says, India's current account ended in a surplus for the first time in 17 years. The current account balance recorded a surplus of 0.9% of GDP in 2021. But the fourth quarter of the same year saw a current account deficit of 8.1 billion US dollars. What contributed to this deficit? So let us have a look at this piece of information and then we'll come back to our question and answer it. So first of all, uh, what they are saying is that the current account of the year 2020-21 ended in a surplus. So what is this current account? Current account is an important part of our balance of payments. So if I talk about balance of payments, it's a statistical statement, okay, a statistical record of transactions and the transactions are, are the ones which are taking place between residents of one country with that of other. So a statistical record on, trans on economic transactions ka jo ek country, dushri country ke saath over a period of time karti hai, that is balance of payments. So we have different components of balance of payments that include your current account, your capital account and the official reserves account. So what does current account comprise of? The current account comprises of your trade in the goods and services, the unilateral transfers and the factor income. So whatever are the export imports of goods, export imports of services, they are part of your current account. Then one-sided transfers are included under unilateral transfers, some grants, some aids. Then we have factor income. Factor income, if you are making investment elsewhere or other investments are coming to your country, then you might earn some interest on those investments. You might earn some profit. You might have to pay some rentals. So all such payments are, or receipts are part of your factor income. So this is the current account. Then we have capital account. So whatever inflows and outflows are done with respect to foreign direct investments, with respect to foreign portfolio investments, or you are taking some international borrowing or providing some loans, all those are also part of capital account. Then there might be some payments and receipts with respect to purchase and sale of capital assets. So they are also part of your capital account. And then the third component of balance of payment is the official reserves account. So we have discussed about these reserves in a separate session where I talked about the forex reserves, that how gold, foreign exchange, the foreign currency assets, gold, SDR, reserve position are all important foreign exchange reserves. So all these things are accounted for under the official reserves account. So these are three main components of our balance of payment account. Now talking about the current account, okay, because we have seen a surplus in this account after 17 years, it is worth noting. So if I talk about current account for this financial year as well as the previous financial year, this is the data and we also have the data available for the fourth quarter of this year and previous year. So let's see what the data says. According to the data, the financial year 2020-21 ended in a surplus. So we saw around 24 billion US dollar surplus, which is 0.9% of the GDP. And if we talk about the same current account of previous year, then previous year we saw a deficit. Uh, same amount of deficit was there, around $24.6 billion worth of deficit, which is again 0.9% of GDP. But the fourth quarter data says that this year also there is a deficit in current account. So, pure saal ka current account surplus mein hai. Lekin fourth quarter ka jo hai, wo deficit mein hai, around 8.1 billion US dollars ka deficit hai. And yehi agar hum pichle saal fourth quarter se compare kare, to surplus tha tab current account mein. Okay, 0.6 billion ka. So let us see why we have seen a rise in uh, the current account surplus this year. So financial year 2020-21 saw a surplus of 0.9% of GDP in 2020-21, which is first time in 17 years. 
Last time when we had a surplus in current account was in 2003-04, where surplus was 2.3% of the GDP. So why have we seen this surplus? What is the major reason behind this surplus? The reason is the shrinkage into demand for imported items due to the pandemic, the sharp contraction in the trade deficit. We, buy, we import the goods or services or we export them. So as far as the goods are concerned, the imports and exports have been impacted, okay, because there has been a shrinkage in the demand for imports. So utne imports nahi hoye, jiski wajah se import karne se hamara deficit bardha hai. Toh import pandemic ki wajah se kam hoye, jiski wajah se hamara trade deficit mein contraction aya aur usi wajah se hamara poore saal ka jo current account balance hai, wo surplus mein raha hai. So the major reason is the fall in the imports due to the pandemic and when your imports fall, your trade deficit falls and that fall has been the major reason behind this surplus okay now moving ahead to the quarterly results so as i've already mentioned that the current account balance recorded a deficit in the fourth quarter of this year so why has there been a deficit so one major reason is higher trade deficit has led to a current account deficit overall if we talk about entire year we saw that there was shop contraction and trade deficit but then we saw normalization in the um, economy okay the export imports began again so import demand is coming back to it norm it's normal so okay ab covid ka impact thoda sa kam hua hai aur uski wajah se hamara jo bhi economic transactions the wo back in track pe aa gaye hain they are back in track we are again seeing exports and imports jis wajah se hamara trade deficit bada hai isliye current account deficit bhi bada hai jo imports hamare kam hue the wo badhne lag gaye jiski wajah se hamara trade deficit increase hua next important component of current account which has affected this deficit is the lower net invisible receipts so net invisible receipts were lower in financial year 21 due to increases in net outflows of overseas investment income payments net outgo from the primary income account pri primarily reflecting net overseas investment income payments increased so jo hum internationally uh, payments karte hai wo badi hai receipts nahi badi ओवरसीज इन्वेस्टमेंट की जो पेमेंट्स हमें करनी पड़ी किसी ने यहाँ इन्वेस्टमेंट्स किया होगा उनको जो भी प्रॉफिट्स दे रहे हैं इंटरेस्ट देना है वो पेमेंट्स बढ़ी हैं जिस वजह से हमारा ये डेफिसिट हुआ है रिसीट्स कम हुई है प्राइमरी इनकम की लेकिन पेमेंट्स बढ़ी हैं जिस वजह से हमारा करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट बढ़ा है नाउ वी आर सींग नॉर्मलाइजेशन इन इम्पोर्ट डिमांड योर गोल्ड इम्पोर्ट्स योर अदर इम्पोर्ट्स आर वाइडनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ विच यूर current account deficit is also widening so if this thing continues if the lockdowns are completely removed is if economic activity picks up then our current account will uh, is expected that the current account deficit will further increase so this is the same data this has been taken from rbi website uh, i show i have shown you this using these charts as well so as mentioned surplus 24 billions so this is for entire year this is the surplus and last year we had a similar amount of deficit and these are the quarterly results for this year a deficit and for this year uh, or for previous year we had a surplus in the fourth quarter so this is the information other than that some more facts which you should know include net services receipts increase so current account ka deficit is wajah se nahi raha kyunki hamara सर्विसेज इम्पोर्ट ज़्यादा ना हो के हमारी रिसीट्स ज़्यादा आई हैं नेट सर्विसेज से क्योंकि कंप्यूटर ट्रांसपोर्ट बिजनेस सर्विसेज इसमें से अर्निंग्स काफ़ी ज़्यादा बढ़ी हैं सो नेट सर्विसेज रिसीट्स इंक्रीज ऑन बैक ऑफ राइज इन नेट अर्निंग्स फ्रॉम कंप्यूटर फ्रॉम ट्रांसपोर्ट फ्रॉम बिजनेस सर्विसेज एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट द यूनिलेटरल ट्रांसफर्स वन साइडेड ट्रांसफर्स इफ यू आर in india and your uh, some relative is residing in other country and they are sending back you the remittances okay then uh, the receipts have increased okay that's the, so that is not a reason for your deficit private transfer receipts mainly comprising remittances overseas have increased so char important components hai current account ke we just discuss about that okay the goods export import services export import unilateral transfers and factor income so isme se hamara jo goods hain okay unka trade deficit affect hua hai jis wajah se hamara current account fourth quarter mein deficit mein raha ki trade deficit bada hai 
एंड इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द सर्विसेज तो सर्विसेज का डेटा क्या कहता है सर्विसेज का डेटा कहता है कि नेट सर्विसेज जो हैं वो बड़ी हैं जो सर्विसेज से रिसीट्स आई हैं वो बड़ी हैं सो ओवर द ईयर हमारा गुड्स में डेफिसिट जो था वो कम हुआ लेकिन फोर्थ क्वार्टर में बड़ा सर्विसेज ओवरऑल इस ईयर की बात करें तो इंक्रीज हुई हैं उनसे जो रिसीट्स आती हैं यूनिलेटरल ट्रांसफर्स की बात करें तो हमारी रिसीट्स बढ़ी हैं ओके एंड फैक्टर इनकम की बात करें तो हमारी जो पेमेंट्स गई हैं वो बढ़ी हैं सो आउट ऑफ दीज वी कैन सी वॉट इज द रीजन वाई वी हैड अ सरप्लस और डेफिसिट इन अ क्वार्टर और ईयरली ओके नाउ मूविंग अहेड some information about the other account so fdi inflows fpi both have increased we have taken a session also where we recorded uh, the highest levels of these flows okay then external commercial borrowings have reduced vis-a-vis -vis what was there last year so this is the chart which shows the data okay so if we move back to the question which of the following has been a major reason for the deficit in the fourth quarter higher trade deficit has been the reason for the same now moving to question number 2 which says officials from 130 countries including g20 nations and oecd members agreed on broad outlines for an overhaul of rules for taxing international companies india approved joining oecd g20 framework for global minimum tax which of the following statements are correct with respect to basic provisions of this deal and its potential impact on countries like india so if you remember we have already taken a session where this global tax plan was adopted by g7 nations now that proposal has also been accepted by other countries which are a part of oecd or g20 so what is this g20 oecd these are some international organizations okay these organizations work towards economic cooperation towards financial political economic cooperation towards world trade okay so the there are some countries which are member countries and they have agreed to the global tax plan if you remember when i discussed about that in the session where i talked about that g7 nations have adopted this very deal then the proposal was to have a minimum of 15% tax countries where uh, the profits are earned will also be able to tax the mncs this was the proposal so if you don't remember it you, if you want to get into the details you can watch the june day 5 session again there the deal was discussed so what is its status now let us have a look at it why was this global tax regime proposed in order to prevent the erosion of taxes by the mncs so what companies used to do they used to take the advantage of those countries where the tax rates were really very really low so they showed that they earned profits in those low tax jurisdictions in order to be able to pay low or no taxes so companies have been taking advantage of countries where the taxes are low to artificially lower their tax outgo now that problem was to be resolved and thus this global tax regime proposal came up so what's the current status of the deal अब इसका क्या करंट पोजीशन है जब लास्ट uh, हमने ये डिस्कस किया था जब जी सेवन नेशंस ने इस डील को क्लियरेंस दे दी थी अब ये प्रपोजल बाकी ओ कंट्रीज और जी ट्वेंटी नेशंस को प्रेजेंट किया गया था सो ऑफिशियल्स फ्रॉम वन थर्टी कंट्रीज इंक्लूडिंग योर जी ट्वेंटी नेशंस एंड ओ मेंबर्स हैव अग्रीड ऑन ब्रॉड गाइडलाइंस फॉर ओवरऑल ऑफ रूल्स फॉर टैक्सिंग इंटरनेशनल कंपनीज अब बाकी कंट्रीज ने भी जो जी ट्वेंटी या ओ सी डी के मेम्बर्स हैं उन्होंने ये स्टैक इस इस डील को क्लियरेंस दे दी है इंडिया भी इसका एक पार्ट है और इंडिया ने ये ग्लोबल मिनिमम टैक्स का फ्रेमवर्क अप्रूव कर दिया है सो वॉट आर द टू इम्पॉर्टेंट पिलर्स ऑफ दिस वेरी प्रपोजल वन इज टू री एलोकेट द एडिशनल शेयर ऑफ प्रॉफिट टू द मार्केट जुरिस्टिक्शन वेर एवर दीज कंपनीज आर अर्निंग प्रॉफिट वेर एवर देयर इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज आर टेकिंग प्लेस दे हैव टू पे टैक्सेज ओवर देयर एंड सेकेंड इज टू हैव अ मिनिमम फिफ्टीन परसेंट टैक्स सो कंपनीज क्या करती थी अपना प्रॉफिट उन कंट्रीज में दिखा देती थी जहाँ कंपनीज अपने आप को उन कंट्रीज में लोकेट कर देती थी अपनी सब्सिडरीज या अपने यूनिट्स वहाँ सेट करते थे जहाँ उनकी प्रॉफिट में कम टैक्सेस लगेंगे लेकिन अब इस डील के अकॉर्डिंग क्या होगा कि किसी भी कंट्री में भले ही कंपनी लोकेटेड क्यों ना हो जहाँ पे वो अपना इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी कर रही है जहाँ पे वो अपना बिजनेस कर रही है जहाँ पे उनकी मेन मार्केट है जहाँ से उन्हें प्रॉफिट मिल रहे हैं उस कंट्री में भी उनको टैक्स देना पड़ेगा 
एंड मिनिमम टैक्स इज फिफ्टीन परसेंट अगर वो एक कंट्री में फंक्शन कर रहे हैं जहाँ वो फिफ्टीन परसेंट से कम टैक्स दे रहे हैं तो उन्हें दूसरी कंट्रीज में जहाँ जहाँ की वो कंपनी है या जहाँ पे वो प्रॉफिट्स अर्न कर रहे हैं वहाँ पे भी बाकी अमाउंट का टैक्स देना पड़ेगा मिनिमम पंद्रह परसेंट टैक्स से वो स्केप नहीं कर सकते सो दीज आर द टू मेन पिलर्स ऑफ द डील एंड वाई आर कंट्रीज एक्सेप्टिंग दिस ओके जी ट्वेंटी नेशन ओ ए सी डी मेम्बर्स वो इस डील को एक्सेप्ट क्यों कर रहे हैं द सोल्यूशन वुड रिजल्ट इन एलोकेशन ऑफ सस्टेनेबल रेवेन्यू टू मार्केट जोरिस्टिक्शन पर्टिकुलरली फॉर डेवलपिंग एंड इमर्जिंग इकोनॉमीज सो देर आर कंपनीज विच आर कमिंग टू कंट्रीज लाइक इंडिया एंड अदर डेवलपिंग और इमर्जिंग इकोनॉमीज सो दोज कंपनीज आर एक्चुअली टैक्सड वेयर दे आर लोकेटेड ओके एंड नॉट इन दीज नेशन so because of this a lot of revenue which the countries where these companies are operating could have earned they are losing out on that revenue so this deal is going to be a solution to jaise agar amazon hai ya koi aur international company hai wo india mein operate kar rahi hai india mein profits generate kar rahi hai to kuch portion us profit ka us revenue ka indian government ko bhi milna chahiye in the form of taxes then is a majority of oecd g20 inclusive framework on base erosion and profit shifting adopts this solution so what is this base erosion and profit shifting it is basically a tax planning strategy only which i just discussed that how mnc set up their units over there where they have to pay low taxes so because of this the countries are losing out on billions of dollars worth of revenue so this loss of revenue will be reduced once this these company these countries adopt the global tax deal so oecd g20 inclusive inclusive framework on this base erosion and profit shifting what does it focuses on it focuses on having some disclosure some transparency with respect to taxation having some uniform taxation rules so taki jo companies hain wo dusri jagah pe apne unit set karke profits pe tax na lage uska benefit na utha paaye isliye ek framework aaya tha jis jo फोकस करता है कि कैसे हम एक यूनिफॉर्म टैक्सेशन सिस्टम ला सकें इंडिया एंड अदर पार्टिसिपेटिंग नेशंस विल गेट ग्रेटर शेयर ऑफ प्रॉफिट्स एंड कैन एड्रेस द इशू ऑफ क्रॉस बॉर्डर शिफ्टिंग ऑफ प्रॉफिट्स व्हिच इज अगेन अनदर बेनिफिट ऑफ दिस वेरी डील नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट व्हाट अदर प्रोविजन आर पार्ट ऑफ दिस डील सो आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू मिनिमम फिफ्टीन टैक्स विल बी देयर एंड एम विच आर लार्ज एम प्रॉफिटल profitable mnc's they will be governed by this global tax deal so what uh, kind of mnc's are considered to be large or profitable large mnc's are those where global sales are more than 20 billion euros and whose profit in uh, is basically more than 10% they will be considered as mnc's which will be governed under this very rule so what are indian india's priorities henceforth so india expects that this very agreement which they have reached in the oecd meeting they that deal will be finalized by october so abhi jo baki minute details reh gayi hain puri honi wo october tak ek deal finalize ho jaye ye uh, india ki expectation hai kyunki 2023 tak they expect ki ye deal properly function mein aa jayegi वाई ओ ई सी डीज अनाउंसमेंट इन जुलाई गिव्स ब्रॉड कॉन्टोर्स ऑफ रिजीम फाइनल डिटेल्स जो है वो अभी भी फाइनलाइज होनी है जैसे इन एम एन सीज को टैक्स करना है आपने अगर ये प्रॉफिट आपकी कंट्री से कमा रही है तो क्या परसेंट टैक्स लगना चाहिए कैसे लगना चाहिए जो फाइन डिटेल्स है वो अभी भी फाइनलाइज होनी है इंडियन इंडिया स्टेटेड सम इशूज इंक्लूडिंग शेयर ऑफ प्रॉफिट एलोकेशन टू मार्केट कंट्रीज रिमेन ओपन एंड दे नीड टू बी एड्रेस्ड स्टिल सो वॉट विल बी द पोटेंशियल इम्पैक्ट ऑफ दिस ऑन इंडिया first is that we'll be able to earn the revenue which we if those companies will also be taxed in india which are operating in india having economic activity in india secondly talking about will we have to change our corporate tax rates no hamare corporate tax rates already 15% minimum ko surpass karte hain to hame apne tax regime mein corporate taxes ko change karne ki zarurat nahi hai Thirdly, क्या इम्पैक्ट होगा न्यू टैक्सेशन राइट्स मिल जाएंगे इंडिया को उन कंपनीज पे टैक्स लगाने के सो दो इंटरनेशनल कंपनीज विच आर ऑपरेटिंग इन इंडिया अर्निंग प्रॉफिट इन इंडिया इंडिया विल बी एबल टू टैक्स देम सो इंडिया विल गेट टैक्सेशन राइट ऑन देम एंड वंस दिस डील मटीरियलाइज इंडिया विल रिमूव दी इक्वलाइजेशन लेवाए सो इंडिया इम्पोजेस दिस लेवाए अराउंड सिक्स परसेंट ऑन दी ऑनलाइन एडवर्टीजमेंट सर्विसेज which are provided by non residents so it was applicable to companies like google and other foreign online advertisement 
service providers. Other than that, 2% of this levy was also imposed on digital transaction by foreign entities in operating in India. So, India equalization levy lagata tha kuch companies pe. Up agar ye deal finalized ho gai or function mein a gai by 2023 implement ho gai to India ko ye cheese change karni padegi ki ye equalization levy ko hatana padega. So this is how India will be impacted. India ki revenues bar jayenge. India ko taxation rights mil jayenge on companies pe jo yaha aake perform kar rahi hai or profits earn kar rahi hai. India ko apna corporate tax change karne ki zarurat nahi hai. Lekin India ko equalization levy hatana padega. So ye impact hoga. Okay, so if I move back to the question. Which of the following statements are correct with respect to this deal? First is incorrect, remaining two are correct. First is incorrect because 15% rate hai, baki do correct hai. So answer is option D. Now moving on to next question. The RBI in its financial stability report expressed the concerns associated with big tech firms entering into financial services that can present challenges to regulators towards maintaining adequate stability and governance of ecosystem. Which of the following is not a part of five major big tech firms? So, abhi recently financial stability report I thi, jo mene last session mein discuss bhi ki thi. Usme emerging risk mein ek concern mene discuss kiya tha, jahan pe financial stability ko concern ho sakta hai agar big tech firms bhi India mein enter karengi aur financial services provide karengi. So, let us have a discussion of that very, uh, in, uh, that very section of the report which talks about risks of big tech firms. So, RBI's financial stability report of July 2021 talks about the risk of entry of big tech companies in the emerging market. So, first of all, we discuss what big tech firms are. Big tech firms are related to those technology firms which have quite a dominant position. Jinki market capitalization is around 1 to 2 trillion dollars. So, big technology firms comprising of five major firms including Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft. So these five are called the big tech firms. Okay. Now big tech firms, if we enter in financial sector, they can harm the financial stability. Ko harm sakte hai. If these, the RBI in its financial report, stability report expressed the concerns associated with entry of big tech firms into financial services. What is the challenge? These big tech firms can uh, be challengeable for our regulators because they will have to maintain or take steps to ensure enough stability is there and proper governance is there. So, a big tech firm ki entry se regulators ke liye problem ho jayegi ki unhe inko bhi regulate karna padega, inka bhi governance pe focus karna padega. Otherwise, hamari stability hamper ho sakti hai. So, Amazon, Google, Facebook, all of these have been active participants in India's real-time payments, UPI. So, we have seen that Google Pay, hai, Amazon Pay, hai. we are making payments through Google, uh, Amazon, they are providing us the financial platforms. Google, Amazon have enabled financial intermediary services like EMIs, card payments and all that on their platforms. So, big tech firms offer a lot of financial services. Offer karti hai. Uh, be it real-time payment networks, be it card payments, be it other payment system, be it asset management, be it banking, insurance. Kai type ki overall emerging markets mein, advanced markets mein big, uh, big techs to hai financial services provide kar rahe hai. Big techs offer a wide range of digital financial services and have a substantial footprint in payment system, asset management, banking, insurance in advanced and emerging economies. So, how can they impact? They can have both a positive as well as a negative impact. If these big tech firms also provide financial services, obviously it will support our financial inclusion and they might be able to render that services in a more better manner with more efficiency. So, efficiency gains will be there. Moreover, it will increase the competition for the bank. So, they will also render more better services. So, this is the positive side. But there is a downside as well. There are some concerns if these big techs enter financial services in India. One is the challenge for the regulators. They will have to regulate them. They will have to deal with the stability, maintain the stability, maintain the governance. Second is the operational risk. So if these financial, uh, if these non-financial firms are providing the financial services, then being from a different 
uh, functional background they will face some risk with respect to their operations then two big to fail issues now these are already big technology firms now if they enter into financial sector also so and there will be some bilateral exposures or some intersector exposures of other banks other financial institutions with them so if there is some problem with respect to these big tech firms the results will also be or their impact will also be seen on those banks or financial institutions thereby hampering your financial stability so इतनी बड़ी कंपनीज ऑलरेडी ये हैं ये टेक्नोलॉजी के टर्म्स में अगर ये फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज भी रेंडर करेंगी और इनके एक्सपोजर्स जो हैं ये बोरोइंग कर रही हैं लेंडिंग कर रही हैं इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रही हैं बैंक्स में फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशंस में अलग अलग मार्केट्स में तो अगर ये फेल होती हैं तो इनका पूरे सिस्टम पर बहुत बड़ा इम्पैक्ट पड़ेगा पूरा सिस्टम फेल हो सकता है और स्टेबिलिटी हेम्पर हो सकती है देन इज obviously they are import they are the technology firms offering digital platforms so there are challenges of uh, challenges of antitrust rules cyber security data privacy aapki data ka misuse ho sakta hai cyber crime ho sakta hai to wo sare challenges to hai hi hai then they straddle many different non financial lines of business with sometimes opaque overarching governance structures now along with the financial non financial services which they are actually into they will also render financial services so uh, governance might be hampered what usually happens if you ha- talk about banks there are rules governing banks there are acts governing banks which allow banks to enter into some banking activities some banking functions and they are not allowed to carry non financial businesses uh, so as the banks are not allowed so if these big tech firms they along with the non financial things are offering financial products also they might not be able to match up to the quality to the governance standards and thus the problems might come up and stability can be hampered ab wo apne area of business se alag ja ke financial services render kar rahe hain to ho sakta aur wo itna zyada regulate nahi honge jitna aapka banks ya financial institutions regulated hai to aapki governance hamper hogi aap अच्छी गवर्नेंस नहीं है तो ऑब्वियसली फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी को डर है उससे सो दिस इज दी अनदर चैलेंज ऑफ दिस बिग टेक फर्म सो आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इफ वी सी व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट अ फाइव पार्ट ऑफ फाइव मेजर बिग टेक फर्म सो आंसर इज ऑप्शन ई सैमसंग ओके सो दिस वाज द कंसर्न व्हिच वाज एक्सप्रेस्ड इन द फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी रिपोर्ट व्हिच आई वांटेड टू डिस्कस विद दिस आई वुड लाइक टू एंड अप दिस सेशन थैंक यू सो मच